my name is Rachel. Welcome back to Oxart Gardening. Today I'm going to show you how to harvest your fava beans, how to cook them, preserve them, and I'm going to show you my favorite fava bean recipe. Fava beans are quite unlike other beans. They are a legume, but they do really well in the cold. And as you can see, the plant is shaped very differently from what you might consider a normal bush bean or a pole bean that you would grow during the summer. And so when you're going to harvest these, you might think that what you look for is going to be very different. However, you'll find it's really <laughs> very similar to figuring out when to harvest any other legume. So we'll start with little babies. After the flowers are pollinated, you will see little baby beans like this, and this is the dead flower kind of coming off of it there. And as you go down to where the newer flowers were, or sorry, the older flowers, um, you'll see the beans starting to grow and get large. And if you are waiting for your very first harvest of fava beans, it can be really tempting to pull them early, but you've got to wait just a little bit longer than you think to get a good full-sized pod with lots of full-sized beans inside of it. So for example, this pod, it looks pretty great, right? It's kind of large and you can see it's just starting to puff out, but this is not ready yet. This is where most people might accidentally pick their fava beans, but this is not quite ready yet. If we move further down, you'll see the size difference, how much larger this one has become. And it's a little bit more puffed out at this point. And this is about when you want to start harvesting your fava beans. You might also notice, ignore those birds being super loud behind me, um, you might notice that the newer beans are fuzzy looking. And as they get close to being ready, you'll see especially this one and this one behind it, they get shiny and that fuzziness kind of goes away. And that's another good indication that your fava beans are about ready to harvest. Kate is very concerned about those birds making sounds. So with a lot of other beans, you can just kind of yank them off the plant or use your fingernail and they'll come off pretty easily. But fava beans I found have a much thicker stem. And so I use scissors. Normally, normally I use garden pruners but those are broken right now, so I have some scissors. So as you're harvesting, if you accidentally pick something that you realize is just a little too small, because I know when I'm harvesting, I start pulling this, pulling that, and then suddenly my judge of what is big enough to harvest changes because I've pulled all the big stuff and I start accidentally pulling smaller stuff. And so if you accidentally pull something that's a little too small, that is okay. We can still probably get some beans out of this pod. It is not a total loss. So if you're looking at your beans and you're like, Rachel, I hear you, but I still just, I feel very unsure about whether or not my beans are ready to harvest. Go ahead and take the plunge and pick one and open it up and look inside. And they should look like this. They should be about this big. This is about as big as like the top part of my forefinger. This is a good size for fava beans. So I've got all my fresh fava beans and I just wanna note before we go inside that if you want dried fava beans, you have two options. You can still pick them at this stage and dry them inside or you can just leave them on the plants and wait for them to dry. So you've picked your fava beans and at this point you have a few different options for preservation. Like I said, you can just wait for the pods to dry out. Ideally, also like I said, you can wait for them to dry out on the plant. Now, if you want to freeze them, you can either freeze them in the pods like this, you can peel them and freeze the beans, or you can do what we're going to do and we are going to shuck them peel that shell off of the bean and then freeze the beans like that. And so the reason I'm doing all of it this way is because I want to put in the work up front and then have easy to access fava beans later. But if you didn't know, fava beans have this shell on the outside, 
when they're fresh it's kind of harder to tell but you can see this is kind of like a dull green and if you were to eat this this outer bit of skin would be kind of tough when you peel off the outer layer you get the inner bean and this is the the tasty tender part and most of the time when you're eating fava beans this is what you want to be eating if you have dried beans if you have dried your beans you will dry them and they will stay like this until you are ready to rehydrate them and use them at which point you will then rehydrate them peel off this outer layer and cook the insides so step one of this process is to remove the beans from the casing and that is the the big green bean looking part that comes around the outside you pull all of the beans out of the casing and once you've got them all out of the casing while you're doing that by the way you could start your water boiling for this step and go ahead and salt it like you would for pasta and so once you've got all of your beans out of the casing you'll then want to boil your beans sort of blanch them for just a few minutes and then we're going to dunk them in ice water and this is going to help us remove that outer shell thing the skin that i was telling you about that's a little tough I have seen people who prefer to remove the outer skin as well before boiling because they think it preserves the color a little better or they think it's a little easier to do it all at once. So you definitely don't have to do it this way, but for me, I find this a little bit easier. All right, so I finished shelling all of my beans and you can see this is the amount of edible stuff that you can expect from the amount of pods that I had. Um, it is quite a bit of work, but I promise it's worth it. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and freeze them, this is the stage where you would do it. Uh, I would put them in plastic bags and then get all the air out that you can, seal it up, put it in the freezer. Should be good for quite a while and very easy, again, to pull out and put into whatever recipe you want. So with these fresh fava beans, instead of storing them, I'm going to make full madonnas which I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but it is a Mediterranean sort of uh, savory breakfast thing that you can make. I would say it's like really flavorful hummus and then you dip your pita bread in it and it's really, really delicious. So for this recipe, we are going to boil the beans again. I'm going to put them in a saucepan with a bit of water and I'm gonna add salt and cumin to them while they're cooking. And then once they've cooked enough to be mashable, I'm going to put the heat all the way to low and I'm going to, in a separate place, in a mortar and pestle, I'm going to mash together my garlic and hot pepper. If you don't have a mortar and pestle, you can just mince everything up really fine and then kind of squish it with the side of your knife so it's kind of pasty and you're getting all of the, the good aromatics kind of squished out of it is what we want. And once that's mashed pretty well together into sort of a paste, I'm going to add lemon juice, mix that all up, and then I'm going to pour that over my warm mashed fava beans. Then I'm going to add some olive oil. And at this point you can either say, yeah, that's done, or you can start adding some fresh ingredients. A lot of people like to add fresh tomatoes and herbs on top, especially parsley. I don't really like fresh tomatoes very much, so I'm just gonna leave those off and I'm gonna put a little bit of fresh parsley on top and you should serve this warm with pita bread. You could also do pita chips if you wanted, anything like that, just scoop it up, eat it, it's delicious. Lovely little breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, whatever. Um, it's a little spicy, so if you don't like it spicy, leave out that pepper, but we are going to go ahead and dig in. Definitely has a kick to it. Mmm. Oh, it is so good. It's so different from food that I grew up with, but it is so good. Alrighty, I'm gonna go finish this, but thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I wish you happy gardening.